Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to talk about Carnage number one. I got the foil cover, and uh, it turns out it's hard to film this thing. Uh, it's so shiny, but it looks really cool. And when I saw it, I was like, screw it. You know, I'm going to say goodbye to reviewing monthly comics anyway. But since I haven't finished reviewing up to Venom issue 25, which is where I want to stop for Venom 25, I figure why not squeeze Carnage number one in? Uh, because we also have Red Goblin stuff we got to talk about. So, We'll at least get this issue in. But from here on out, I won't be reviewing this comic book or discussing it until it probably comes out in trade paperback form. I'll wait till then. Because honestly, what I saw here was interesting. And it reminded me of a, a movie and a video game, actually, that were reminiscent of each other. Um, but also kind of same old, same old, too, with uh, Cletus Cassidy, where I didn't find a lot of... I didn't find this an interesting take that much on Cletus. Um, I was excited to see Flash, but, you know... <laughs> I don't know where they're going to go from here. So I'll wait and trade paperback for at least now, though. We'll talk about this first issue um, and then the creative team right here we got. And I, I'm going to mispronounce names. So I uh, so in case I do, there's their names. This is the young lady who is writing the book, Torin uh, Gronbeck. Hopefully I'm not butchering that. I'm really sorry if I am. And Perry Perez on the art. Um, this is a good looking book and it's not badly written. It just comes down to, uh, you know, the writer having to pick up the pieces from kind of the mess that Carnage has been in lately. I really did not like the the big Carnage crossover thing where he was like there was Carnage Reigns, which had some good moments. But then I felt like it kind of dropped the ball a little bit at the end. And then obviously the big Death of Venomverse storyline with the God Carnage. And I thought that was a mess. And both stories ended where God Carnage kind of got away, as, as we talked about on this channel. Um, he kind of gets away and delves into the multiverse. And then the Cletus that was on Earth, he gets defeated by, you know, Miles and all the other characters, uh, Iron Man, that were fighting him on Earth. And he kind of evaporated. And there was a hint of, like, maybe his blood was still around. But then, you know, who knows what happens to that. It was more of a, a, a bad stinger at the end of a story. They should have just, you know, killed him. Because this book kind of ignores that and it has god carnage going to like the great librarian or whatever at the at the end of time and he's you know continuing to be a god he's killing everybody he's you know fighting and uh and he ends up tearing the arm off of the great librarian but mainly for his staff which has the uh, you know this power in the center of it which has it's basically uh, powered off a black hole and carnage grabs that too and absorbs it into him and the the great librarian guy is like you know did i should I have let him get away, you know, with, uh, or should I have kept him here and had him read, you know, learn the knowledge he's seeking, um, or, or play the mind games that I played with him, but really doesn't matter because uh, apparently fate has decreed that whatever path happened there, Carnage still would end up where he's going to be in this book. And where he ends up being is really odd <laughs> for a God. You know, he became like this big, all knowing, all powerful being, he could go into the multiverse. He could do all these things. He went around and successfully killed a bunch of Venoms from a bunch of different universes and got all the powers he wanted and all the knowledge he wanted for the most part. But this little mind game that this librarian played with him was, you know, who are you really? What is your purpose? And he's like, you know, I, I guess I haven't really had one um, since not having Cletus, but that's not true <laughs> because he he has. He went off and became a god, um, but he still was like, yeah, I still want to be whole, though, and and to go on to the next phase of what I'm doing, I'm going to need Cletus around. So he reaches deep down inside into his codex, I guess, and finds some DNA strands of Cletus and reproduces Cletus Cassidy. Um, kind of how like symbiotes can, you know, asexually reproduce and print a version of themselves or <laughs> not print, but have a version of themselves come out like the Life Foundation symbiotes came out of Venom or Carnage came out of Venom and Toxin came out of Carnage. He kind of gives birth to a Cletus Cassidy doppelganger clone, you know, DNA restructuring, whatever it is. And the two of them walk around together and have this big plan to kind of um, take over, you know, and, but not like, not like so loud, not like the carnage God was doing before, but he wants to leave like a statement, I guess is a better way to say it. And he starts by recreating essentially like a crime that was in a movie called The Frighteners, uh, which I really love by Peter Jackson, and then also a video game called Silent Hill 4, which also has similarities to Frighteners, where you have these victims that have numbers carved into their head. And Silent Hill, 
it was a character named Walter. He was the villain of the game, and uh, or I guess villain. He was a, a troubled kid that grew up and became this killer. Um, but uh, the entity he was awakening was really the villain, I guess, of the game. But he, Walter, was uh, killing people and carving numbers in their head. And he started with 10 victims, and then Walter died. And then when he came back as a ghost, he picked up from number 11 and was killing people as a ghost all the way up to number 21. And it was a, a, a ritual called the 21 Sacraments, uh, some Silent Hill lore for you. And then over in Frighteners, you had uh, this character that was uh, played by Jake Busey, who was a killer in his everyday life, him and his, uh, you know, or I won't spoil the movie, but uh, but he was killing people and he got up to number 12 and then died and then came back as a spirit and starts killing people from 13 onward. And they go way past 21 kills, I think, in Frighteners. So, um, so in this, you have Cletus now who's going around killing people and he's carving numbers into their chests. And, uh, and that's basically what you have through the book. I won't spoil every detail of the book, but you have a Cletus Cassidy who's still the god Cletus, and he's uh, this is what he wants to do. He wants to just go, and he wants to make this big statement and let everyone know that Cletus Cassidy is back. And uh, and I don't know. I'm just like, what a waste of god powers, <laughs> I guess. Um, he's just going in and just killing people like a serial killer like he used to do. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. So it, it feels like, a, okay, we got to get Carnage back to basics. He's too powerful and everything. But that's the thing is he is so powerful and he's still that powerful in this book um so it's just like well when's that shoe gonna drop and maybe that's why the writer is keeping it there so that it can drop um because you don't want him to go too powerless i guess after what he just did so maybe it's going to be a gradual thing i don't know and maybe he's going to be fighting flash thompson so flash is in this book who has like an everyday security job that he's late for he's kind of invisible nobody notices him He's kind of up, you know, frustrated because uh, Peter Parker and other people, now that he's back from the dead, no one's really texting him or no one's, you know, calling him or anything like that, which I found really interesting. I actually think that was the most interesting thing in this book was the fact that, uh, you know, Flash is back from the dead and no one seems to care. No one's reaching out to him. No one's asking how he's feeling. Nobody helped him get a job. Nobody, nothing. And, uh, and you know, and since he's been back, he's been floating around with the Secret Avengers, which uh, me and Venom Balor are going to talk about coming up because I don't want to skip over that in the lore part of our, our channel. But um, yeah, so we'll get into, you know, what Flash did when he was time traveling with the Secret Avengers. But in present day, like he's back and nobody seems to care. And I thought that was really cool. I was like, wow, that's actually a really interesting aspect. And probably the thing I would, I look forward most to reading in future issues of this book is, is that. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of wish this was a Flash Thompson book and, and it kind of is, it's a Flash and Carnage book because it goes back and forth between them pretty regularly. He hangs out with this girl that I think he has a love, it's like a love interest maybe, um, at a bar called Poor Decisions, <laughs> Poor Decisions Pub. And, uh, and he's kind of befriended this bartender there and he goes there to drink, which is very anti-Flash, but because he has the anti-symbiote on him, it's allowing him to drink without um, making him drunk and, and all that stuff. It's healing him while he's drinking. And I'm just like, yeah, but Flash, like alcohol is such a big thing for Flash to get over. And so that's something I don't like in this story is that Flash feels because no one's reaching out to him because of this he made this horrible decision of drinking alcohol and I kind of wish he wasn't. Um, it was really neat to see him be that strong because I think that's important, you know, in comics is to have these characters have these flaws, but then, you know, fight against them and Flash is not even fighting anymore. He's just having beer after beer after beer. And the girl's like, you know, the girl he's with is cutting him. She's like, look, I'm cutting you off. And he's like, I'm not even drunk, but it's like, yeah, but then he gets into a fight. And so he still makes a bad decision so I don't know, like I, I'm, I get that characters can't be perfect, obviously, and they have to sway sometimes, but this is just one of those decisions where I was so proud as a fan of Flash when he got over his alcoholism and he bounced back. That's very hard to do in real life, obviously, and uh, and so to see him do it here and just be not so nonchalant about it and be like, yeah, the suit takes care of it so I can drink as much as I want, it's such a... I don't know. And it's, I don't like it for the character personally. And then finally at the end, the book comes to a conclusion with this big saw trap. It's kind of like from saw six or saw seven. You have this billionaire who's in a glass case and it's filling with acid and people are watching his flesh just melting off of his bones. Um, and meanwhile, there's like clues written all over it about the other victims. You know, what happened to victims 
1 through 11 because we saw them get killed by Cletus really rapidly in a in like kind of a montage scene, but they haven't been displayed yet. Uh, Cletus is starting with guy number 12, who's this big billionaire guy that Cletus got to really easily. So with that, you know, you have this guy just burning away and melting away in front of everyone and Flash picks up on, he's like, okay, there it is. Like that's the sign because he, he's felt the presence of a new symbiote through whatever he is now, you know, a resurrected anti-symbiote. So he figured out a new symbiote was in New York somewhere, but he has been unable to find, you know, Carnage for two weeks now. And then here we are where Carnage is like, okay, here's my statement. I'm back. I'm Cletus Cassidy and Carnage again. And uh, there's clues written all over, like I said, all over the glass box of, you know, where's Peter? Where's John? And these are victims that he killed before. Where's Matthew? Some of them have biblical names. Um, so yeah, it's just more of that. You know, we saw a lot of that in the Carnage solo series and uh and it was kind of neat then but then but that was like a different version of carnage right it was a different cletus it was a cletus that still thought he was a cletus but he also had the extreme symbiote stuff whatever inside of him and this is like a brand new cletus that is created from old dna so he feels kind of out of place technology feels a little new to him you know cell phones everyone has a cell phone now and that's different than you know it used to be for him um so it's he's kind of a man at a time but they don't touch on that too too much they just kind of hint at that as possibly being something so you know it's a good start i guess uh, if you want to take carnage god down to street level again i guess there's not a lot of coherent ways you could do that in a comic book but to see him do this and not go full god mode is interesting because like i said he just killed a whole army of venoms in death of venomverse which i didn't like that book at all i thought it was a very rushed mess of a book which sucks considering the talent that was involved so the fact that this is pumping the brakes i'll give it i definitely give it credit for that uh you know i think that's a good way to start this book um is to go with the god stuff right off the bat so you know hey this did happen but there's a plan and the plan involves starting at street level again for whatever reason um and maybe hopefully lead to like the final they need to just kill carnage forever <laughs> like i know that sounds blasphemous to a lot of you but man oh man they like this character needs a complete restart at some point because the history has gotten so out of control for this character so i could see the the trouble that this writer and team have of trying to ground the character again but whether you like how they did it or not in this book the fact is at the end they've grounded and pinned cletus and carnage back down to earth again back in like a serial killer mode type thing you know so like i said whether you agree with the method that's used in the book or not that'll be up to you to decide for me it didn't really work for me the method but the end result, the last page, I'm like, okay, well, this and and Flash Thompson being in the book, I'm intrigued and I'll keep up with it in trade paperback. But it wasn't enough for me to keep up with it monthly. Uh, so I'm not going to be reviewing this monthly. You know, sorry, you know, to I know the team who worked on it, they probably are happy because <laughs> if anyone knows my long history of reviewing, uh, you know, modern Venom and stuff and Carnage comics, I'm not always positive. I'm very constructive. You know, I look at books as an editor and as a creator myself, and I, I pick things apart. Sometimes I nitpick too much. Um, but if I had to give a rating to this book, I would say out of five, I'd still give it a three because, like I said, I cannot imagine how hard it must have been to, like, depower Carnage and bring him back down to where they bring him in this book. And the thing is, though, is he still has that god power. So whenever this plan maybe doesn't work or blows up in his face he's going to be a real threat and i mean he was killing avengers and nulls and other universes just like two months ago so i'm uh you know then that's way too op for me as a character like that that when a character gets that level they need to just die and never come back to me he's just uninteresting as a character now and he's just like this walking power fantasy of just all these different powers and, and things and now he's a frighteners and uh silent hill 4 walter kind of you know copycat killer <laughs> in a way as well with the numbering and stuff so i don't know we'll we'll see i guess where this goes i'll pick it up in trade and, and we'll talk about it after the first trade comes out again but for now at least issue one like i said i think it's a three out of five and that's because the art's good and i think the writer really put in an effort and i didn't find a lot of like bad or cringe dialogue in this um you know and i felt i felt like the torin who wrote this um she had a little bit of that in her venom issues that she did where 
you know, Black Widow's getting like her own symbiote. And some of that didn't land for me, but this this landed more often than it didn't. I just didn't like that Flash Thompson moment so much. And then, you know, the method of getting, you know, Carnage, God Carnage back down to Cletus. I wasn't a big fan of that, uh, but he's here now and we have flashback, uh, flashback. Um, so I'm curious to see where it does go from here, but not curious enough to pick it up monthly. Uh, but if you feel differently or if you feel the same, whatever it is, let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you and we'll keep the conversation going down there. And hopefully you checked out our last episode of the you know Venom vlog, because in the previous episode of this, we actually played through something in the new Spider-Man video game that kind of re references or connects in a way to Carnage. I don't want to spoil you know it too much if you haven't uh, checked that episode or if you haven't played Spider-Man 2 yourself, but definitely give it a check and, uh, and watch that video if you haven't already, where my mind gets kind of blown that we see a character in Spider-Man 2 that I didn't expect to see. We didn't get Eddie Brock, but we definitely got this other character uh, in the um, Insomniac universe, so... I guess there's that. So let me know, you know what you think in that video uh, in the comments over there. And let me know what you think here. And then whoever got that digital code that I posted up at the beginning of the episode, enjoy it. And let me know your review of the book down in the comments below. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.